Now that we've seen all these different types of financial problems, the real trick is deciding what type of financial problem we're actually working with as we solve a problem. So that's what we're going to try and do today, is we're going to try and classify the type of finance problems. So I'm not going to actually solve these problems we're talking about. We're just going to set them up, discuss what type they are, and why we picked what we picked. And then we'll go on to another example. And to kind of help us um, decide what type of finance problem we're going to look at, I'm going to look at a little chart here. Basically, we have a decision we need to make up front about every finance problem. We need to decide, are we dealing with a lump sum? Or are we dealing with payments? Because that's going to take us two different directions. Now, if we're dealing with a lump sum, we need to decide what's happening with that lump sum. Are we dealing with simple interest, interest just on the principal? In that case, the final amount, the future value, is p times 1 plus rt. If it's compound interest, interest on interest, which is going to be the case most of the time, then we use that formula A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. So lump sums, depending on the type of interest, is going to be one of those two formulas. With payments, we've got to make a decision if we are saving the payments or if we're making a loan. If we are saving, making investments that are going to benefit us, the interest and the payment are going to our advantage, that was the annuity formula, which is A equals M times 1 plus R over N to the NT minus 1 all over r over n. So if we're saving the money, that's the formula we want to use. If we're making a loan with those payments, then we set the lump sum and the payment formulas equal to each other. And we have p times 1 plus r over n to the nt equals m times, I'm going to go off my screen here, 1 plus r over n to the nt, and I'm off my screen, minus 1. I don't know if that got on the screen or not. I'll find out when I upload the video. All over r over n. Anyways, you know that formula. And just kind of to name these formulas, uh, the first formula was simple interest. The second formula was compound interest. The second was an annuity, or the third, sorry, annuity. And the fourth we called installment payments. So if we can keep this kind of flow chart in mind, are we talking about a lump sum or payments? Are we talking about simple compound savings or loans? We can figure out which type of formula we want to use to solve a given problem. So for example, if I have $1,000 invested at 8%, compounded daily, What will the final amount be in seven years? 
Or let's do four years. The question is asking about the final amount. Because the question is asking about the final amount, that tells me we're looking for a future value, the value at the end of the investment. And the $1,000 is invested in one lump sum. So this is the future value of a lump sum compounded daily. So that's our compound interest formula. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Using the values in the problem, we're looking for the future value, the accumulated value. We've got $1,000 as our principal. 8% is the interest rate. Compounded daily, there are 365 days in a year. So that's our n, and our time is four years. So 1,000 times 1 plus 0.08 divided by 365 to the 365 times 4. And then we could solve for that future value of the lump sum. Let's try another one. Looking for clues. What type of problem are we working here? We want to know how much should be invested at 5% compounded semi-annually. For the final amount, to be $3,000 in seven years. In this case, we're asking how much should be invested right now. We're looking for the now. This question is asking for the present value. And notice it doesn't say how much should be invested each month, each week, each year. It just wants to know how much should be invested now. This is, again, a lump sum. But this time, we're looking for the present value of the lump sum. So same formula, A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. But this time, we're going to plug in different numbers. 5%, that's our interest rate, 0.05. Compounded semi-annually, that's the number of compounds per year, is 2. $3,000 is the final future accumulated value. That's our A. And seven years, that's the time. So $3,000 is the A equals the present value. That's what we're looking for, times 1 plus the interest rate, 0.05, over N, which is 2, to the 2 times 7 years. And then this formula could be used to solve for p and get our final answer. Let's try another one. Let's say we have $250 invested each quarter. at 6%, what will the final amount be
in eight years. So for this problem, what you might notice is we're looking for the final amount. That's the question. What will the final amount be? It's asking us to find the future value, or A, the accumulated amount. But notice this time, we're investing each quarter. Each quarter means we're making payments. Now, this is an investment, so it's going to be the future value of an annuity. So we go to the future value of an annuity formula. That was the A equals M times 1 plus R over N to the NT minus 1 all over R over N. So what do we know about this problem? Well, the 250. That's the amount that's invested each quarter. That's the periodic payment. That's the M. The 6%, that's the interest rate, 0.06, invested each quarter. That's the number of compounds is 4 in a year. Number of payments, 4 in a year. And finally, our time is 8 years. Plugging that in. We want the future value. That's the A. M is 250 times 1 plus R.06 over N, which is 4, to the 4 times 8 minus 1, all over R, which is 0 0.06 over 4. And then this will tell us the future value of the annuity. Let's take a look at another problem. How much should be invested each month at 10% to accumulate $5,000 in four years. So in this case, we're being asked to find how much should be invested each month. Those are regular payments. And we want to know how much should be invested. So we want to know what is that regular payment that's going into the account. What we call that regular payment that's going into an annuity is a sinking fund. We're looking for the sinking fund payment into the annuity. So if we're looking for the payment, it's called a sinking fund. Same formula, though, A equals M times 1 plus R over N to the NT minus 1 all over R over N. So how much should be invested each month? So with months, N is equal to 12, 10%. The rate is 0.10. $5,000 is the accumulated future value in four years is the time. So we've got, whoops, we've got $5,000 for A equals the sinking fund payment, which we're looking for, times 1 plus the interest rate, which is 0.10 over N, 12 months, to the 12 times 4 minus 1 all over 0.10 over 12. Solve this formula for m, and we will know the sinking fund payment into this annuity. How about this problem? 
a lottery pays $800 per month. That's a bad 800. There we go. $800 per month for 15 years. If the interest rate is 4%, How much would a lump sum payment be? So here we're making regular payments per month. Payments made per month. What we're doing is paying off a loan. We want to know what the present value is of the installment payment. installment payment. I want to make sure I have enough room to write this formula down. The present value times 1 plus r over n to the nt is equal to that monthly payment times 1 plus r over n to the nt minus 1 all over r over n. So let's see what we know in here. The lottery pays 800 per month. That's that periodic payment. For 15 years, that's the time of the payments. The interest rate is 0.044%. Oh, we also said per month. That's our n. n is 12. So we're looking for the present value times 1 plus the interest rate, 0.04 all over 12 to the 12 times 15 is equal to that monthly payment. Oh, we know the monthly payment, don't we? The monthly payment is 800 times 1 plus the rate, 0.04 divided by 12 to the 12 times 15 minus 1 all over 0.04 divided by 12 solve this equation for the principal, the present value, and we know what that lump sum payment's going to be on this installment payment. How about this problem? What would the monthly payment B on a $25,000 car at 8.2% for five years. Here we're looking for the payment on a car. It is a loan that we're making payments on. We are looking for what that payment is. We are looking for the actual installment payment. And so again, that formula is p times 1 plus r over n to the nt equals m times 1 plus r over n to the nt minus 1 all over r over n. And we just have to decide what variable represents what thing. 
We're looking for the payment. We don't know the M, but we should know everything else. It's a monthly payment. So N is equal to 12. $25,000 car, that's the starting value for the loan. That is our principal present value of the car at the interest rate of 0.082 for a time of five years. So let's plug that in. $25,000 is the present value times 1 plus 0 0.082 over n, which is 12, to the 12 times 5 equals. We don't know the monthly payment. That's what we're trying to find. 1 plus r, 0 0.082 over 12, to the 12 times 5 minus 1, all over r over n. 0.82 over 12. And then from there, we could solve this equation for m, the monthly payment. So that's what I want to take a look at today on the assignment, the shorter video, because I want you to take the time to struggle through the problems in the homework set, trying to decide what type of problem this is, and can you set it up appropriately. Not so much focusing on the solving, because that's mostly plug and chug on the calculator. But what type of problem are we working with? Can we set it up so that we could solve? Again, we do that with this nice little chart. Are we dealing with a lump sum, or are we dealing with payments? Good luck to you on the assignment, and I'll see you in class with any questions.